why hello and welcome everybody so today i wanted to go ahead and show you guys a really cool game called hero siege that came out about actually like nine years ago or eight years ago and has underwent many 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 changes because it basically was a roguelike at one point in time and then it switched from a roguelike from a single or duo development team to uh, like a six-man team six-man project and is now a hack and slash action role-playing game with a semi medium core option that's always on of course there's still regular hardcore uh, but let me go ahead and talk to you guys a little bit about this game because it's, it's pretty unique so to start off there are a bunch of classes um, there are six default classes default meaning if you buy the base game you get these classes there are a lot of DLC exclusive classes meaning you can only buy them or play them if you buy them now this is a big turnoff for a lot of people but wait the base game for Hero Siege is literally like $5 and that's it. You don't need any other DLC content. There's like DLC for skins. You literally don't need skins. There's DLC for extra acts. The only reason you would need DLC for extra acts is if a season changes, like season as in Diablo 3 or season as in Path of Exile League, and that act has to do with majority of the season, which as of now we're on season 11 of Hero Siege. I don't believe that's been the case. So, with that being said, let's talk a little bit more. So, each class now has two skill trees. Previously, there used to only be one. The skill trees are not crazy customizable. You know, they're pretty bare bone. Uh, this is something they want to work on still. I have talked with some of the balancing developers, and they said a lot of classes are not in the right spot right now, but we want to, you know, you got to start somewhere. So, they just put out the two trees. Uh, that being said, classes are still pretty cool. Um, they're basically based on elemental types. So certain classes benefit from certain elements. So as an example, we are playing a white mage. So let me jump into the game. So from here you have a pretty much literal carbon copy uh, of the Diablo 2 lobby uh, and how it works. You can connect to your gateway. You can have a four men, uh, four people in your group. And then you have your difficulties normal hell infer or hell inferno and then a difficulty slider now the slider should really only be used after you are literally insta killing everything it's not really beneficial to slowly crawl in this game if that makes sense this is like a zoom 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 path of exile zoom 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 chronicon style game okay so to go ahead and jump into this let me explain some more basics so when you first start the game, you're going to start right here at the town of Inya, and then you're going to work your way up. So after every one, two, three, four, uh, four zones or so, one, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you've got like your King's Garden, and then you've got your Frozen Lands, your Pyramid Level 2, uh, etc. These are like your boss areas where there's like three floors and then a boss. Very, very, very densely packed areas. So as an example, blue means that uh, that's where we came from. Unstable Rift is something we'll go into in a little bit. There's a lot of really nice um, reasons to farm the open world in this game. When you're in Inferno difficulty, I think all monsters in the zone are scaled to... Uh, are not in the zone. All monsters like in the game, in the last difficulty, are scaled to be the same, I believe. Now there's still obviously monster base types and... And other stuff to take into account so let's use an example so for me farming this area right now in inferno forest temple in like this open world area um, i have a chance of finding one of three keys the keys are to unlock the dungeons in inferno uh, when i was showing you guys that little menu and i was popping through like the different acts each one of those little zones can have its own spawn of like open world events some of them are instanced to spawn their own specific events and Inferno, uh, Inferno is when a lot of the events become very, very, very worth it. Ooh, Rusted Cube is 1% all stats. I'm going to take that. So I'm not, I'm not going to really full clear this right now and show you guys. I just want to go back and explain more of the game to you. So go to King's Garden. You can do it, you know, two, two, there's three floors. Then you fight your boss. Uh, in Inferno difficulty, bosses have rune, uh, specific boss high runes that they can drop. So that's like your, you know, 1% chance at dicing and getting that and getting super lucky. It has a rune word system exactly like Diablo 2. Um, it's got a socket system, 
pretty much like Diablo 2. I mean, most games just have a pretty simple socket system. As an example, this is a thinking cap, so I would need a four socket, uh, I think, Shaco, and I forgot the other ones to make this. I know in D2, Shaco is a, a legendary, and this is just a base. So, there is a set bonus. Um, sets are typically two to three pieces, which is nice. Uh, that means you're not necessarily forced into a set for every build. So I have my three-piece sacred set, which activates the holy one, which gives healing zone a omega super fast tick rate, which we don't need to talk about my build right now. That's not what the video is for. Um, so as gearing, the way gearing works, let me go into my options here and show you guys. There is a simple in-game loot filter. So as you're playing through the game, you'll probably turn off common right away and then turn off superior and then have your rares, legendaries, and mythics drop. And then as you're getting higher level, you'll most likely disable rare, eventually disable legendary, and then eventually disable mythic unless you still want gold, in which case you have mythic enabled. The only reason I have common enabled is so I can search for like the rune word bases that I'm looking for. Now, like in Path of Exile, how a piece of gear rolls a health affix tier 7 health 64 hp that is not at all how it works in this game so i'm not going to talk about the low level equipment because i think the low like the early game of hero siege is very bad and i do not like it at all but after hitting level 100 i think the game becomes much more enjoyable so i'm going to talk about this part of the game so um your gear has a quality role and when you're uh when you have things like um what's it called i always satanic there we go the quality is called satanic for red uh, green is also tagged as satanic. It's just a satanic set piece. So when this gear drops, it already has predetermined stats. Uh, in this instance, the only thing that rolls different, I believe, are, and, and this is per individual piece of gear, um, the resistance type. Sometimes it has a primary res and a secondary res. Those can be swapped in and around. Um, then you have damage types. So like my Oculus rolled uh, energy, which is not, or sorry, magic, which is going to roll with percent magic. You could have a fire oculus and you could have a lightning oculus so there's a bit of you know not every single one is the exact same but then you have a quality roll the quality roll determines how strong all of your stats are so imagine if an item has a, is at a hundred percent value uh, on quality in path of exile it's six tier one stats all perfect you can go past 100 quality but that's also not for this video so that doesn't matter so next up to go over the next part you do have a pretty detailed list of everything here. Resetting your skill tree is not that big of a deal. You do have a Paragon system that is pretty impactful. It's pretty simple, but at the same time, it's pretty impactful. Like this gives me 20% of my total energy. Uh, armor is flat damage reduction, so scaling armor is very good. It's, it's really flexible because if you're missing something, you can basically allocate in and then acquire it from here. Uh, next up, there is a Mercenary. I don't really use this for much. Honestly, I, I don't really know. At the moment, my mercenary just shreds their armor, but like I don't really care too much about this. I'll worry about that later. Really, the main thing for the mercenary is that his magic find adds to your magic find, so that's how I have 300 magic find right now. You have a guild. Uh, guilds are free. Literally, if you just get a guild and grind, you get all the permanent bonuses, which is pretty nice. It's got a really nice system for party play. You can hold tab and just see what everyone has. Uh, next up, the relic system. This is the one I was talking about with the pseudo hardcore, or sorry, medium core. Relics are a very important part of the game. In the beginning game, they don't really matter that much. In the beginning game, your main goal is to just find a flying relic and try to not die. So that would be Monkey King Bar, Amputation Kit, or the Bible. Those are the three that give you the ability to fly. When you fly, you dodge majority of on death pits and I think some traps. Um, could be wrong on the trap part. So relics can give permanent stat bonuses, as you can see here. They can give speed bonuses. Mainly their stat bonuses is what you're after. There are some exceptions with things like times two, or sorry, oversized, which gives double projectile. So for a lot of builds, that's like two times clear speed. For me, that's two times the AOE of my aura, which is very important. Um, there are things like homing shots. Uh, as an example, a warp pipe. The only reason I have this is because I get bugged in so many zones. So if I get stuck on a tree, like say I'm stuck here, I can just whoop, warp pipe. That's pretty nice. I like that a lot. Um, and then it kind of adds a nice little, a kind of a twist because 
in a lot of these games when you're grinding there's not really any risk you're just grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding in this game you do have some option which enables some risk so as we're playing seasonal content the current season for for uh hero siege is season 11 which enables uh or introduces chaos towers chaos towers do fine in random open world zones uh, when you start going in them, it's like a series of like 10 waves and then a boss. And the Chaos Tower level will permanently increase until you claim the rewards. So that's kind of nice that there's always risk at dying. There is something called a Wormhole, uh, a Wormhole Key, which is pretty much a carbon copy of Diablo 3 Greater Rifting. See how far you can push your character. I believe that's infinite scaling. And then you have that difficulty slider I was talking to you guys about that you could slide up and down, which will greatly amplify how scary monsters are. And then on top of that, as you're playing through the game, you have a chance in uh, Inferno difficulty that when you run a zone, it becomes like nemesis influence or sat satanic influence, which basically is like plus 100 monster level. And then I think you can find a dungeon that's influenced satanically inside a satanic zone, which then would bump it to like five or 600. And then when you're doing wormholes, you can go even further. So TLDR, game is pretty fun for people who really like grinding. I myself can recommend things like Diablo 2 Median XL. If you enjoy stuff like that, you may enjoy Hero Siege. I know that's a really weird comparison, but that's kind of how I look at it. Um, Grim Dawn Rot has uh, basically another Diablo 2 mod, but on Grim Dawn, that's really fun. Path of Diablo, stuff like that. If you really enjoy the monotonous grinding, you will really enjoy Hero Siege. One of the new things they introduced this season is a auction house, which is really nice because you can sell your gear. Um, so basically, when you find gear that drops, um, you can go ahead and sell it. And the nice thing about this is with the loot filter, uh, you can actually turn up the volume for like a satanic drop. So when it drops, it's kind of like hearing an exalted orb drop in Path of Exile. It's very nice. The game does have its share amount of bugs. Believe me, there is a lot of bugs in this game. But for people who are really burnt out on like Path of Exile and have really played all the ARPGs in the market, this is a really fun one to get into if you can get past that really annoying early game. <clears throat> anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. Take care. Have a good one, everybody.